Are you thinking about starting your own lawn care or home service business? Well, we have all the tips and tricks that we learn the hard way, hopefully so that you don't have to make as many mistakes as us. But if you've already started, don't go anywhere because we're going to be talking about some small business best practices that you need to have in place right now. Welcome to the Checkpoint Podcast, where we help you set and reach new milestones in your small service business. My name is Matthew Armstrong, and I'm your host. And this week, we are starting a short two-week series on how to start your own lawn care or home service business. Hopefully, we are able to share some tips and tricks with you to help you not make as many mistakes as we had to endure. I'm here with Matt Allen, Check's Director of Education AKA the professor. All right, let's go. Let's go. All right. Awesome. All right. But before we jump in, I want to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by check. Look, admin work absolutely sucks. Okay. And check is a business management app that is built specifically to help you stay organized and automate most of your random routine admin tasks. Okay. So you can get started for check uh, for free today with check by going to the link in our show notes or hellocheck.co slash download. And you can start your 14 day free trial right now. Okay. So Matt, we are going in. Um, first, I want to I want you to tell me a little bit about your company. What did you do and your role in it? Yeah, yeah. So I had a full service lawn care and landscaping company that I ran for I think about eight years, um, and I started it with the idea of like only doing lawn care. Okay, that was my idea, right? Like I'm just gonna do lawn yes. care. It's simple. Like we don't need a ton of equipment. Yeah. Um, it's easy to train people and that was going fine for maybe a month or two. Okay. And then I got a phone call from a friend of mine who was like, Hey, I'm, do you do sod? And mm. I was like, uh, sure. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And so then I went to YouTube and looked at like, how do you do sod? And the next thing I knew we were installing sod and then somebody else called us for sod and then somebody else said, well, you know, do you can you like revamp my garden beds? We want to take all the plants out and put new plants in. The next thing I know, we're a full service. Full landscape. service. Yeah, yeah, full service landscaping company. So sort of at its peak, we were looking at like two days of cutting grass per week. Okay. Um, kind of all around, all around the city. And then three days a week, we were doing installs. Um, I got into drainage. If you, if you know anything about New Orleans... Uh, we have a lot of rain and we have some drainage issues. Mm. And so I would um, help solve people's drainage issues. It's really like at, sort of before I passed it off and uh, transitioned out of out of it, that's really what we were doing. Most of our work was uh, yeah. drainage issues for, com- for, for small businesses and homeowners. That's great. That's yeah. great. Um, whenever, uh, how I got started, we actually, me and my co-founder for Check, we actually built a on-demand lawn care marketplace. And in the first year we had over 3000 people request service from our, like from our apps all over the country. That was cool. But, um, when we were running like a very small local beta test in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we had about 200 paying customers that first year. So to go from zero to 200 and at any time we had at least five people who were uh, mowing for us. Yeah. Uh, and, and plus me, um, that was like really fun and stuff, but w- eventually we pivoted from that. We stopped doing the on-demand lawn care marketplace. We learned too much to say that this isn't, this isn't what we want to be yeah, in sure, for the sure. long, for the long haul. So we, we started focusing on the software side of things and that's how check was born. Um, and so from there, I started my own personal lawn care side hustle to really put my head into the day to day issues uh, right, that operators right. faced. Um, we knew we knew a lot from that first year, but I wanted to know more, and so I started my own. And uh, at, at at my peak, I was only uh, I was only cutting one day a week. I had about twenty five clients between twenty five thirty clients at any given time, and uh, yeah, I was just cutting one day a week so that I could still focus on 
primarily on building check. Um, but that was an incredible, uh, incredible and incredibly fun experience Yeah, uh, to, to start that from the ground up and learn and really just focus on becoming highly optimized and yeah. uh, at whatever capacity I could give to it. So, yeah, but Matt, I, I know that beyond what you just said you did, I know that you've also worked with hundreds of small businesses right. to get off the ground and stuff. So I, I want you to bring us in like, Uh, and toss, I want to toss you the first question, where should people start whenever they're looking to start a small service business? Yeah, I think, I think the most important thing that, that to recognize is that we're all different people. Mm -hmm. We all have different needs. And so no, because no person is the same, then no business can look the same. And so it's really important to look you know, do some, whether it's soul searching, navel gazing, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> um, to figure out like, what do you want out of this business? Yeah. Right. So you're saying, look, I'm trying to start a software business, uh, but I only, I want to cut one day a week. That is super typical for a side hustle, right? Yeah. A lot of people work exactly. a full-time job and then they'll stack their Saturday up. Yeah. Right. And go and go cut. We've got a lot of father son teams who are check users who yeah, are yeah. doing just that. Like, yeah. Kids in school all week, dads at work all week, and Saturday, they just nail it and get like, I don't know, 10, 20 yards done. Some of them, they're, yeah. they're killing it out there, yeah, right? Yeah. And and so that's, you know, they don't want to expand past working Saturday. So they have an ideal number of customers, an ideal location. And then you've got on the other end of the spectrum is somebody who says, I want a multi-state operation. Yes. I want like, you know, tens dozens hundreds of trucks yeah right and franchising yeah. like you know there are some extremely large lawn care companies yes. out there that are doing you know multiple millions of dollars of mm-hmm. revenue every year and that's the other end of the spectrum and so somebody who runs that company i mean they they haven't probably touched touched a, a lawnmower or a weed eater in years right yeah. so yeah. it's like well what do you want and it's most likely somewhere in between there mm-hmm. um, and there's pros and cons right like I had a great conversation with a guy once who was like, you know, I tried having employees Mm -hmm. and it was just, it was, it wasn't for me. Yeah. I didn't like the, the sort of managing somebody else's schedule and all. So he's like, I just want to work by myself. Yeah. So he, his whole setup, you know, his whole equipment setup, the way he operated his business was maximizing his business for solo operation to put as much money into his pocket as he could without having employees. Yeah. The company that I was running, I wanted employees. Mm -hmm. I I wanted, I realized how much work it was to be out there selling and putting together, especially for landscaping. Some of these bids are, you know, on a multi-day, one week long, two week long job. It's extremely time consuming to be calling vendors and putting, putting all this together and I needed people out in the field earning money because while I was doing, you know, putting together bids, like it's just a stop, right? There's no yeah. revenue coming in. But I could be working in the truck, um, putting together bids on my on my laptop while the crew was cutting grass or while the crew was, you know, digging trenches, that kind of stuff. And so that worked well for me, right? And so again, what do you want to get out of it? That's the first question. Yeah, um, I think I think one thing I wish I would have known in line Mm -hmm. with this, you know, coming from someone who has done this so many times and coached so many different businesses. I think I wish I would have known that, uh, whatever capacity I was going for is totally okay. Right. Because like for me, whenever I go do something, typically I want to go like, 100% 100%, 100% yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. of whatever I see is like the biggest, the best, you know, operation out there. And so one of the tensions that I dealt with, maybe, maybe not everyone deals with this, but I know I certainly did is that I always wanted to be, I always wanted to be growing, but I knew that I had other goals that, that would, uh, that did not align with me going beyond one day a week. Right. Well, it's also so, hard not yeah. to compare yourself. So yes, you're seeing that, other, that's what, other that's companies what, that's what out there. About. Yes. Right. And they've got these like beautiful trucks. Yeah. And Absolutely. like, you know, a trailer full of like three $15,000 mowers. And you're yes. sitting there going like, well, I want that. I want that. <laughs> but like, yeah. Yeah. you ha- again, back to the person personality. Exactly. Right. I realized I tried to have multiple crews once and the stress that it brought me 
to to not be on site to be like I love coaching. That's really like my personality. So I loved being on site and like coaching new employees and folks like how what's the best way to do this? How are we going to be the most efficient? That's really what my role was as the the manager owner. Mm-hmm. But to have a crew out there like the insurance, the, you know, they're by themselves. Like what happens if they get into a wreck? Now, some people that doesn't stress them out at all. But for me, that was like, I just did not like, it was too much. Yeah. It was too much. And so I pulled back. Like that was an intentional decision of like, we're not going to go this big. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally fair. Um, so I think the, 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 the question to ask yourself, we're going to, we're going to transition, but we, you've you've heard us talk about like our struggle with this, you know. So the question to ask yourself is, where do you want to go? Yeah. So you know, make that mental note because that's going to dictate sort of the rest of the decision of like how you decide to grow your company. So the next thing that we want to talk about is like, okay, so you know where you want to go. Now you need to find some customers, yeah. right? And that that really the first step that we're going to say is doing some research. Matthew, you have a lot of experience both with with your land your lawn care business, but also with Check about mm-hmm. doing customer research. So, can you talk to talk to us, talk to the audience a little bit about like what you've learned through that process? Yeah, I really do think that it's a bit of a to, at least to me in my experience, it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem mm-hmm. because on one hand, we want to know our customer, which means to understand everything about them so that right. we can serve them better. But on the other hand, um, I think that it's very helpful for us to decide who do we want to serve, right. what type of person do we want to serve. So here's an example. Let's yeah. say we want to start a mobile detailing business. Sure. Okay. We're going to be washing cars. But do you want to service like white collar individuals who work in a high rise? You so you go set up shop outside that high rise like every day. Yeah. Do you want to service people who have multiple classic cars? Do you want to service people who just want like a really quick, fast wash? Right. Those are three different types of people, very different types of people. Right. Which means those are technically could be three different types of business models. Yes. And how you acquire people and how you market the uh, your business. And so, you know, as I've done this a, a few times, I it it is helpful to say like, what is the type of person that you want to serve? And then over time, that's going to have to change as you understand more about your customer. And then you're able to tweak that from there. But a few different questions that I think are helpful to lay sure. out and just just kind of do some uh, mental exploring about is is really kind of like a who, what, when, where, why. Okay, so first of all, who are they? Um, a very, very simple uh example of this is if you're starting a lawn care business, I can tell you one thing about your customers. They have to have a lawn. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Like that's like plain and simple. So are they homeowners? Are they, are they car owners? Are they pool owners? If you're starting a pool cleaning business that like very simple, like, like who are they and who, like, what do they need to have type of thing? Um, for some businesses you need to choose between, uh, or at least put some thought between like, Do you want to focus solely on residential work or do you want to focus on uh, more commercial work or are you open to both? Um, Another aspect is, is what are your potential customers goals or like what is that demographic or that stereotype that you've like started to build in your mind? What is that? What are their type of goals? Like what are your customers goals? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, for example, are you trying to go after people who want the bare minimum of everything or are you wanting more high end type of customers? Um, Those are the you know, those are very different people. Um, When do they need your service? So are you going to be offering more one off like cleanup type of services or is it going to be more recurring? And then beyond that, how frequently will they let you service them. Like, are you open, at least for lawn care, a big debate is, um, are you open to taking biweekly jobs? Like a lot of one off jobs or even one off jobs on demand. Yeah. And, uh, for, for the majority of people who've been in it for years upon years upon years, they'll say like, I only do weeklies. And I will say that that is ideal. And I think that's what everyone's goal should be because like, if you're dealing with, uh, you know, 
if you're dealing with 25 jobs a week, yeah. I would rather that be 25 weekly customers instead sure. of 50 bi-weekly customers. It's less people to deal with. But I know in the early stages, I, I was open to taking bi-weekly jobs. Yeah. Like yeah, I was totally we had, fine we with it. Several of them. Because mm-hmm. it, it helped me get my business going. And then from there, I tried to build up the uh, the weekly people. Um so yeah, how, uh, how, when will they need your service? Another one is where do they live? Where do they work? Where do they play? Mm-hmm. Um, of course, like if you're starting a home service business, you, you need to know like where these types of people live that are going to pay for your services, but also where do they work? Like what, like that's going to help you learn how to reach mm-hmm. them. If you're going to put out flyers at certain, you know, certain places. Um, and then where do they play? Like, is there a, is there a place where these certain, this certain type of person that you're trying to serve hangs out at so that you can target marketing efforts at that place. Yeah. It might be Facebook. It might yeah. be a certain Facebook group. Um, but, uh, wh- you know, where they are is important. Yeah. I mean, I know a big business around here in Southeast Louisiana is boat, de- boat detailing. Mm. If you're going to find customers for boat detailing, you need to hang out at the launch points at the marinas Very true. on Saturday. Um, the other thing that I want to I want to throw in here, and we didn't really talk about this, but when I was running um, the small business boot camp, one thing that we we had all of our students do was uh, customer conversations, and so they would get a little gold star on a chart nice. every every week for how many customer conversations they had. Dude, so this amazing. was like, even if you didn't have a business, this was okay. If you don't have a business yet. It's talking to po- the type of person who would be your customer. Yep. And so you're asking some of these questions like, you know, like, where do you live? What kind of services do you want? What are what are the problems you have with your existing service yeah. provider? Uh, so if you're if you're in the early stages of like trying to decide, like, do I want to start this pressure washing business, this pool cleaning business, mm-hmm. like find people to talk to and then ask them the questions like what are your pain points what what do you wish your your existing service provider did differently you're going to learn yeah. so much and be so much more prepared to even be able to have these initial sales conversations of like yeah. i already know the pain points of these folks uh, and i can speak to them yeah yeah that's and that was the going to be the last thing is like why do they need your service yeah because if they're already paying for someone is there something wrong with how they're currently being treated by their their existing operator? Yeah. And is there something that you could capitalize on as someone who's like a little hungrier, maybe a little more willing to go that extra mile? Um, okay, so uh, one of the ways, a story on how I learned this whole a- aspect whenever I was talking about chicken mm-hmm. and the egg, where it's like, you know, you want to put some thought into like who, who your customer is, but then you're going to start servicing people. And a lot of those people are going to look different from who you thought you wanted to serve. Yeah. Because you can't, you know, can't pick and choose as much early on until no. there's enough demand for your services. But, you know, for, for example, I had these, I had these uh, two, actually at one point I had three people next door in this, like neighbors that were like door to door to door um, in this small cookie cutter neighborhood Mm -hmm. and I loved it because all of them fell below my minimum price. So I could drop the trailer once and cut three yards at my minimum rate and make an absurd uh, effective hourly rate because they were just, they were just so small. So I had this thought, which was, I want to pick up as many of these yards as possible. So I Mm -hmm. started going door to door in this neighborhood. I was knocking on these doors and I was trying to just uh, sell services saying like, Hey, my name's Matthew. I'm with Armstrong Lawn Care. Can I please give you a free bid? Like I I would have given you so many gold stars if you would have been part of our program. Well, had (laughs) had I gotten gold stars for that, I probably would have knocked on all of them (laughs) twice. Yeah. But anyways, the, the thing was is that I started to realize this is a college neighborhood. A lot of these people cut their own grass or don't even do anything about it. And they're, they're un- renting and they're unwilling to pay. Yeah. And I just realized, wow, I kind of like lucked out to get three, even homeowners. three of these. Yeah, 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 for sure. Let alone being next door to each other. So, but then I, 
uh, there's this other neighborhood that was like a couple miles away that had a little bit larger. They weren't hitting my, min- they, it wasn't my minimum. So I was, pr- you know, pricing these yards 70 to $80, right? right? Mm-hmm. Uh, more on some of them, but they definitely took a little more time. I was happy with the rate I was getting, but these were the types of customers that were willing to pay for, uh, you know, pay a premium price. Um, I also was able to get like different upsells from those different mm-hmm. customers and I continued to build up my clientele in that neighborhood. And I what I could have done is drop my minimum price and tried to scoop up as many of those small yards as I possibly could. But I chose to stick with a premium price and go with less customers just because that aligned with my goals and who I wanted to serve. Sure. Better. Sure. Yeah, so, there's not a right or wrong answer there, right? No, like No, there's not. It's different for everybody. Like I, I know some, some folks we talk to, they love the volume game. Yes. Like they want to know how, like, and they can get so many yards done in yeah. a day, uh, but their clients are way less particular, right? And so yeah. they're, they're doing it for less, you know, lower dollar amount that's yeah. a great r- route density yeah. and they're just knocking it out of the park. That's yeah. sort of unrelated to knowing your customer, but yeah. you're making some decisions there. Yeah. All right, before we keep going, I want to give a quick plug for Check. The Check app helps you stay organized and automate all of your routine admin tasks so that you can spend more time actually making money and less time doing admin. Why? Because admin sucks. Nobody likes admin. Admin really, really sucks. Okay? So if you want, um, if you want, you can get Check for free today at the link in our bio or the link in our show notes or going to hellocheck.co slash download. Um, one of the biggest reasons why operators start looking for Check is to help keep their schedule organized. Now, this is one of the best parts about Check because once you get set up, you never have to worry about missing a job again. And even more so now because one of the things that we just released is day before notifications to let let you know when you have a job coming up. That's absolutely clutch for side hustlers. But anyways, I want to give you a real uh, real review from a recent subscriber. Um, it was a long strand of numbers, so we're not going to read that. But uh, they said, Check is an amazing management app. It helped me get my lawn care business up and running from the invoices to the recurring jobs. I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. Boom, five star review. That's a five right star there. review. Um, but yeah, let's get back to the episode. Um, the, the next thing that I'd go into from there is like once we know our customer, we have to understand a bit about our competition. So, like, what's the yeah. lay of the land right now? Like, who are the people that are offering your services that you're about to come? kind of step on their toes, right? Sure. Now, I, I'm a firm believer that that if you're starting a home service business, there's, there's never going to be too many home service businesses because it, it's hard work. So there's like, even though there are low barriers to entry, not everyone wants to do that hard of work, right? right. And so like, I, I don't think there's ever going to be like a massive imbalance where no one can find work um, or anything like that. I think there's always going to be work. Yeah, there. there's enough work out there. Yeah, but... but We need to understand like what the options are currently. Um, Also understanding like uh, how much people are willing to pay. Like one of the biggest things that affects the the rates that you're able to charge as a service operator is kind of like what the market can bear. This is like kind of economics 101, but in the same sense of like supply and demand, like how many customers are out there versus how many, uh, how many businesses are there. The fewer the businesses and the higher the demand for those services, the higher the rates you're going to be able to charge. But the more options are out there, the more you become a commodity, the lower the prices you have to charge, unfortunately. And so it's important to have a lay of the land of like, um, what are other people charging? You can't like, this might be a little controversial, but what you could do, just going to throw this out there. What you could do is call different lawn care operators, ask them to bid your yard. I don't know what yeah, you think about that. Yeah. That's a little that's a little that's a little gray. I don't know that I would do that. I'm just gonna say one could do that. One could do that. One could as do an that. option. I the route that I chose was talking to peop, friends who owned homes who were paying for lawn service. Hey, that's what way are, less sketchy. What, what are do you, that. What are you paying for this? I'm thinking of starting <laughs> my own lawn service business. Yeah. What are you paying? I want to I want to know sort of what the market is out there. Yeah, and not not just knowing what they what they would 
pay, but going over and saying like, what would I like? It actually be helpful to know like if you if you find out um, who is paying, and then you go over, you look at their yard, you see what you would charge, and then say, all right, now what are you paying? And kind of comparing those mm-hmm. prices to help you adjust up or down, um, pending, uh, you know, pending uh, what what you would have bid. So. Then one of the next things that uh, is helpful to get a grip on is like, how could you differentiate yourself? Like what is something from the competition, from right? the competition, yeah. like how could you position yourself against what the average, you know, business is doing out there to help you stand out? Now, a couple of things that are big winners in, at least in home services, you know, a lot, a lot of people, uh, or home services more often than not gets a little bit of a bad rap for being unresponsive yep. and for, uh, and just for kind of stopping showing up like poor communication and disorganization. Mm-hmm. And so just by being organized and like committing to communicating well, you can win more jobs than not just because yes. you're the fastest to respond you're the most professional you're commu- you're, like, you're invoicing people on time all that stuff so just by installing a few processes you're going to you're going to beat uh, beat a lot of people but uh, another another way is like have just having a better quality of service mm-hmm. um, and it's going to take a little time for you to build that uh, build that rapport you could take a look at some of our other podcast episodes on like posting before and after pictures and using social media to um, to like build a rapport in uh, in a specific area but those are a couple of ways that yeah you I, was a con- I was having a I was having a conversation um, in our discord server R- real quick plug. Uh, if you want to have conversations and just chat with us, um, jump into our Discord server. The li- we'll have the link in the show notes or mm-hmm. in the description. Uh, but Matthew and I are super active in there, and we've got tons of like super experienced lawn care providers who are also in there. And so it's a great place to ask questions Get about, you know, equipment or even. So here's the question: Was I was talking to a new lawn care business owner who wanted, who was like frustrated because he's like, everybody's advertising on Facebook, like $25, any yard, any size. And he's like, I don't, Uh, I don't want to do that. Like my numbers wouldn't support that. No. no What do I do? Right. Do I need to lower my price and try to like compete against them? So he's looking at the competitive landscape, which is smart. But I said, well, what, what are you doing different? Like, you know, even, even the fact of like, is your truck and your equipment clean when you show up? Yeah, that's like, a simple one, but it, it's, it can it, be a big deal. It projects, like, you can project, even just with your, like, appearance, that you are professional and you are going to provide a service where something looks good. So if you yeah. show up to do mobile detailing and your van or your truck looks like trash, <laughs> like, that doesn't project that you can yeah. take care of somebody else's stuff, right? Facts. Um and so I always preach like look look nice, you know. Even if it's like a polo shirt tucked in, like you don't have to buy a uniform, but uh, make sure your truck is clean. Putting on like letters on the side, like the lettering your truck or putting the magnets on, that just like yeah. it just raises you up a notch, mm-hmm. right? And so it's about it's about perception and then just nailing it on the quality. Yeah. Right. And so that was a conversation we had of like, he's looking at the competitive landscape. And I think a lot of folks are going to go out there and look at the competitive landscape and maybe feel a little bit dismayed because they're like, everybody's charging so little. Mm. Um, But you don't have to to enter in at that bottom basement price. That is it for this week's episode. Make sure to come back next week whenever we finish this series on how to start your own small home service business. And in the meantime, just remember that here at Check, we're here to champion you, the operator. So if you have any questions or any desires for our content that you you want us to put out, go join our Discord at the link in the show notes or email us at podcast at hellocheck.co. 